If you are looking for a job in the construction industry, this is a great time and this video is for you. I'll be going over the top seven jobs in construction where I see a lot of the need. So hopefully if you fit into any of these roles, you can get going right away into the industry. So let's start with where I see the biggest need and the biggest demand in the construction industry. And that starts with just a regular construction worker. The labor force is dwindling. There's not a lot of people that want to work in the trades anymore, but we still need people to build these jobs. And it's kind of interesting to see because, you know, the whole push to college and this is what I believe, right? The whole push towards college, you know, everyone needs to get this degree. Everyone needs to get this, you know, white collar job has really created a surplus of people with degrees that are willing to do the work. However, there are less people out there that are willing to work the blue collar jobs or working in the field. So again, you have a smaller pool to choose from and that's why a lot of times too, people are saying that a lot of the older timers that are leaving the actual field side, there, again, there's that gap in the industry. Those people are, are leaving and a lot of the new people are coming in, but they're not properly trained. They don't know a lot of the different stuff. There's just a different mindset coming from them. And again, when you're choosing from a smaller pool of people, it's harder to get, you know, that higher tier best worker out there. And just right now we need more workers and I don't see this problem going away anytime soon unless we make unbelievable strides in robotics, but you need people to build jobs and it's hard work. Not everybody wants to do it. So I wouldn't be surprised if it switches. If at some point workers are making more money than the staff that are managing them. And maybe it sounds counterintuitive, but when you think about it from a supply and demand standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. If people don't wanna, you know, put in the effort, put their bodies on the line, and that's seen as like a rarer trait, yeah, I mean, the compensation will follow. I mean, even right now in Hawaii, like just an apprentice carpenter is starting at probably like 22, 23 bucks an hour. So with overtime and stuff like these apprentices that didn't even need to go to college, that they're making at least 70 grand just right off the bat. And that's good money. And they have a great skill that they can use in their life. And a lot of these guys do work on the weekends as well. So again, on top of their actual hourly rate, they're making money on the side and a lot of it is cash. But again, you just have this marketable skill that'll help you in life. And some of these apprenticeship programs put you through school. So you're getting an education as well, but you're getting paid. So I really see as if somebody doesn't fit into the college mold, like being in the trades is such a great way for you to get your career started, make some money on the side and just be a productive member of society. And at the end of the day, as a worker, like you don't have to take your stuff home. You don't have to think about anything. And you can if you want to, but that's not the expectation, right? Is that you do your time. Once you leave, you're out, right? You can live your life. You don't have to worry about whatever is happening else on the job. You're gone. And that works for a lot of people. So yeah, I have a huge respect for the workforce. Obviously, it depends on where you are in the states. Some people are like construction is different depending on the state that you're in. Some states are heavy unions. Some people are not. You know, you have different demographics representing in the construction industry. But as a general statement, we need more workers. And I do think there's a lot of opportunity there for people that are willing to do that kind of stuff. Now, the second in-demand job, entry-level engineers. So I know I said that, you know, there's an influx in white collar workers and that kind of thing, but I don't know if that's entirely towards construction specifically. So I do think that we have a shortage of qualified individuals to come in and be project engineers. And from what I've seen, I mean, yeah, people that don't have engineering degrees or don't have construction backgrounds that are applying for these jobs. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm one of the first people to say that construction is an experience-based industry. You don't need to necessarily have the degrees to do the work. It's just pure effort. And again, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity in this day and age now because there is such a gap between the people that are retiring and the people that are starting up which means you have opportunities to grow. You have opportunities to move into stretch roles if you want it. And people that take advantage of that, I think you can really thrive in this environment. You get opportunities faster than you probably would have if it was a regular, you know, evenly spread out industry. But again, if you're watching this video, if you're a part of this channel, you know that I loved my time being a project engineer. I love the industry. So if you have any questions, I'm doing some free calls. You can look at the link in the description, book a time with me, 15, 30 minutes, not a lot of time. For me, I just want to get to know you guys a little bit better, find out what you guys are struggling with, what I can help with, just so that I can connect with you better. If that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description. But now we'll move into the third job. And the third job I see a lot of need for it is construction superintendents. This could probably be foreman as well. 
but basically the leaders of the field. And I actually see this as a bigger need than like the project manager side, which we'll go through later. But superintendents to me are the most important person on the job. The pace of the job, the vibe of the job, like the way the job goes, I think the superintendent controls all of that. And I still have the belief to this day that it is much harder for a PM to overcome a weak superintendent than a strong superintendent to overcome a weak project manager because the superintendent just has that kind of impact on the way the job moves. A great superintendent to me makes the job great. But becoming a great superintendent requires a lot of experience. It requires you to have that pre-planning side of things. So you have to have like the technical side, but also the behavioral side where you have to inspire people, get people to do work, maybe have those tough conversations. And again, it's just such a unique skill set. And a lot of superintendents, I think back in the day, came from the field because we're having that field shortage. Now people from the office are becoming superintendents. Nothing wrong with that. But again, the different mindset is just there. The relatability of somebody who came from the field, running the field, running the project is just slightly different. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's just different. So again, this isn't something that you're going to be just coming straight out of college. But if you're out there and you have the experience, or maybe if you're a foreman out there, and you think like you want to jump into that role, I think it's a great opportunity for you. You can see how it goes. You can see what it's like. And sometimes too, a lot of it is just taking that toll off of your body from working every single day and using more of your mind than just your muscle. But again, the superintendent to me, the most important person on the job and something that the industry needs a lot more of to make sure that we remain strong. The next job is a detailer or maybe a BIM modeler, just somebody who is able to make drawings, use the technological side of the business to be able to communicate and make some drawings. So if you're not familiar with detailers, these are people that are making drawings to translate what the contract documents are to the field. This is a different skill set than just drafting. It's part of it, but making drawings for people to build off of is a completely different skill. Or maybe an enhanced skill is a better way of saying that. Because you have to know what dimensions do the guys need in the field? How are they going to build it? Are you going to dimension everything off of a grid line? Or is there an offset line that you're setting? And you need to understand how things get built, how you're going to do the lifts. And again, it's just having that technological side of the business down is such a superpower. But having somebody who has both the technological side down and the building side side down it's pretty rare and the other layer of detailing and BIM modeling is that aspect of coordination building the 3d model bringing all the subcontractors models together or just even having the 3d model in general to do the clash detection to do the coordination to help people visualize the 2d drawings in 3d if you can be that person that's very very powerful because a lot of people can't translate 2d drawings in their head they need the model to figure out what's happening on the job. And this is a job that is mostly indoors, inside. Usually you're not working a ton, a ton of hours, but you still get paid similar probably to like an entry level engineer, maybe a little bit less, but it's close. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there as construction adopts a lot more of the technological side of the business, because it really does give us a leg up on our competitors when we have that aspect down. So to me, it's a great time for you to get into that if that's something you're interested in. And now we'll get into the fifth job, which is my job, project manager. And I think it's easier for you to find project managers in quotes because i think you can kind of skate by as a pm i wouldn't suggest it but you possibly could and project management does become a lot about people skills which i think can translate well from other jobs so the need for that field experience is not as great i think it's still important don't get me wrong but i do think that people can make the leap from different industries into project management a little bit easier than say even a project engineer or your superintendents but Experienced project managers are hard to come by and having that balance of being a project manager, but also knowing how to manage your team and being a good team player and being able to bring people together. That's another skill set. And again, too, it's very hard for you to come in as an entry level person to be a project manager right off the bat, because again, for you to lead a team, you kind of have to know what you're doing. If construction is experience based, you just need that time for you to get that experience. The sixth job is safety professional. And this can be a decent entry level job. And again, with the way the world is now, especially construction safety is at the front of everyone's mind. Safety statistics are a great marketing tool for a lot of companies. 
but just in general, you want to keep a lot of these workers safe. And the things where you should just send them out to do whatever, like those days are behind us now. Safety needs to be planned into the work and being a safety professional. And if you really enjoy helping people, I feel like that's one of the places to be. Sometimes people see safety people as cops. I personally think the best safety people that we've had are the ones that kind of buy into the system, buy into the guys and kind of lead from the heart. But again, every job needs safety. We need people that know and care about others and can kind of sift through. It's kind of an interesting personality that you need to have for safety because you do have to police people to a sense, but the way that you do it, your approach and how you inspire people to want to be safe on their own, I think is pretty powerful if you can do it right. But if that's something that you're interested in, you know, maybe you're not doing the big hours and all the long things of operations where you're acting as a project engineer, PM, superintendent, but you're still on a project site. You're still dealing with the day to day. Safety professionals can be a spot where you can land. And finally, the last thing, estimating. So if you don't know what estimators are, they're the people that estimate. They're the ones that give you the budget for the projects. You're the ones that win the job. You're the one that's coming up with that number that we're going to go in for the project. And it's an interesting place to start your career for sure, because again, it's I find it very hard for you to estimate if you've never seen anything built before, but it's not impossible. And estimating is more of an office job. From time to time, it's probably good if you get out onto the job sites and figure out, you know, what's happening, how things like so you can actually visualize what things are. But again, it's a another opportunity for you if you're trying to get into the industry. Maybe if you are more of like a spreadsheets kind of person or a calculating type of person and you're not exactly into the building aspect, but like this concept generally interests you, estimating can be a good place for you to start. And a lot of times too, say if you're in the industry already and maybe you're looking for a change of pace or if you're looking for just something different, maybe try a stint in estimating because running a job and winning a job are two different skill sets. And if you have both, that just makes you that much more powerful as an individual. So those are the seven high demand jobs in the construction industry. If you have any questions about any of these jobs or if there's something that you want me to talk more about, please comment below and I'll do my best to reply to you. And again, if you're interested in those one-on-one -on -one calls, the link is in the description. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.